uh, I'd like to move on to our next um, speaker, Carol Tozer. And uh, she's from Sri Lanka, and she's been an activist. She's been an athlete. And uh, somebody I am thoroughly impressed by. I think I'd be doing a disservice if I just carry on speaking. So I'd want Carol to go ahead and, and uh, enlighten us about her work on women empowerment, um, on not just women empowerment, but also animal rights, everything. You know, Tell us everything about what you have to see, the wins and challenges, Carol. Carol, you have to unmute yourself. Th sorry, thank you, Natasha. And thank you so much, uh, everyone, for giving me the space to speak. You know, I was a national uh, netball player, basketball player. Um, I played, uh, I rode, and uh, I did athletics. So, you know, in my time, you know, they, I was one of the tallest girls around. And so I suppose, you know, I was much in demand. Um, subsequently to that, I still play in the Masters tournaments. Uh, yeah, and I have to uh, stay fit and work really hard because I play with much younger players now. Um, you know, I used the, the podium that I had and the space that I had uh, to bring awareness and, and uh, to, to encourage uh, younger women to become much more empowered and, um, you know, to be able to, to, to get out there in the kind of space that we are all working in. And it's sad to hear because I think we all uh, in the Asian region have similar uh, issues that we are dealing with. So as an, um, many challenges and barriers faced by women include the structural norms uh, of sexism and social conservative patriarchal perceptions and discriminatory attitudes. So that women in sport are constantly forced to put up with the challenges of uh, patriarchal scorn and misogyny in, is, is a reality that need a great deal of exposure. And that note goes without saying that there should be no place whatsoever for any forms of racism or sexism or colorism or homophobia or other dehumanizing phobias in the sporting world. You know, uh, sporting world is somewhere we, 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 even though we were on op opposing teams, we always got on later on because we all kind of spoke similar language. So, um, you know, the, sadly in our region, we women are expected to take a back seat to men and they give up too soon because of this. Uh, the lack of sponsorship on female athletes or from funding to clothing to or even equipment is uh, evident. Uh, there's also abusive treatment of sports women, um, which is not unknown. A uh, lack of good number of females in coaching and training, physiotherapy, uh, it exacerbates the issues because we are actually, we are living in a man's world. Um, in comparison, male athletes are somehow revered and celebrated while female athletes are somehow looked at with skepticism. Their bodies are talked about, what kind of clothes they wore, et cetera. Uh, for example, in Sri Lanka, you know, in the sphere of cricket, you know, we have a really good, we had a really good Sri Lankan team. And so systemic forms of discrimination are so entrenched in the sporting sphere that, you know, although we have a strong Sri Lankan female team uh, at cricket, you know, they're never talked about, you never see their matches on, on, on air. Um, so, you know, anyone committed to addressing gender-based systemic discrimination in sport has a really uphill battle. Anyway, out of adversity, women today are becoming stronger. Both urban, urban and rural women are obligated to prioritize survival. It is destructive reality that has to be promptly addressed through concerted and transparent measure. Uh, media now covers some of the sport, women's sporting events, uh, but you know, not, not quite uh, balanced. Uh, females have the equal right, the right to contribute to sport reporting through commentary, et cetera. And the authorities, I think we need to take, uh, work hard to take affirmative action in this regard. The sporting sector in Sri Lanka often makes news to conflicts and confrontations between individuals spearheading sporting federations uh, due to a great deal of politicking and bureaucratic interference in their management. A lot of the sporting federations, even if they're women's sports, are headed by males. So uh, I think we need a systemic change, uh, which is urgently required. And finally, we come to the wins, and believe it or not, there have been a few. 
in such a backdrop as explained, the national netball team's victories are internationally known. Um, it demonstrates the courage and resilience that and the power of Sri Lankan women. Uh, we also have key figures like Jayanti Kurotam Pala, who an empowered young woman was the first Sri Lankan to scale Mount Everest a couple of years ago, and she was fortunate to find sponsors to help her. And she was able to obtain further endorsements and accolades. We had Susanthika Jayasinghe, a strong, feisty young woman from the rural poor areas who, who wouldn't take no for an answer in order to train and win sol Olympic silver. Uh, we had the first female athlete at the Olympics in 1988. Uh, and the good news, you know, this year at the Tokyo Olympics, five out of the nine athletes that went to the Olympics are women. So, you know, it, it, you know one uh, was actually adopted as a baby and returned to represent Sri Lanka as an equestrian. We have a shooter, we have a gymnast and two sprinters. So I'm, you know, hopeful. So today, young sporting women are much more empowered and aware. We now have a national sports council that seems determined to read on policy to ensure fair and just decisions are made with selection, impartiality, coaches, trainers, selectors, et cetera. And lastly, we now ac uh, accepted the need and appointed committees to experts uh, of experts to investigate any sexual harassment and bullying in sport. And this is through the NOC, and I'm part of that committee as well. I'm happy to know. And so lastly, to Ms. Court Neil Armstrong, one small step for a woman, but a giant leap for womankind. You know, uh, before I uh, finish, I want to tell you something. Uh, today, uh, you also, um, you know, we pay tribute to some of the COVID uh, victims who, who are well known. And I want to tell you, I lost my brother-in-law today and to COVID, sadly. And um, it, on any day, I would have backed out. But, you know, we women, we sports women, we strive and work hard uh, to, to overcome adversity. So thank you for giving me the space. So sorry to hear that, Carol. Yeah. That's okay. Well, I, I mean, you know, I wanted to be here, so thank you.